Okay, this video is on making a kitchen counter organizer. My wife had uh, a suggestion that maybe I could make her a piece of furniture that would sit on the kitchen counter that would allow her to take a lot of her bills that are usually just stacked on the counter and in the way. And so uh, she came up with some dimensions for me that she would like. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, I want to remind everybody that everything I'm talking about here is in the information section of the video. You're going to have the cabinet dimensions, drawer dimensions, wood used, links on different things that I've used, everything from glue to small tools and large tools. So just look at the information section, you'll get it there. But uh, anyways, let's uh, let's get started here. The, uh, the unit that I made was... Uh, made out of rough cut lumber. It's all air dried and it's mostly black walnut and a little bit of cherry. So the first step in getting a job like this done is to get it knocked down to size. Now most of the lumber I have that's air dried is at least three quarters of an inch, most of it an inch thick. And if I were to build an organizer out of three quarter inch lumber, it would look like it's a uh, more of a container for transmission parts. So we had to slender it up a bit and uh, we'll show you that later how we do that. But uh, the first thing we have to do is figure out our dimensions, the lumber we need. You know, I, I didn't keep exact track of how much lumber, but it was amazing how much I went through. I, I'd say I probably went through, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 feet of uh, black walnut and the boards averaged about you know, eight inches uh, wide. So I don't know what that trans to, you know, probably uh, somewhere around eight or nine board foot. So anyways, uh, I started cutting up my, my rough cut. And the first thing I always do is make sure my chop saw is trued up. So, uh, you know, get your square out and, and check that. Because uh, if any of your tools haven't been tweaked in a while, now's a good time to do it before you start cutting hardwood. So anyways, mine was in pretty good shape. Had to make a couple minor adjustments. And uh, once I got my uh, pieces cut, the next thing I want to do is uh, I want to get them to the bandsaw because you don't want to use nine or 10 inch wide boards. They're just going to warp like a potato chip, you know. So what you're better off doing is cutting them into four, maybe five inches at the most strips and then gluing them up together. So, uh, but for now, what I had to do is joint one edge. So when I run it through that bandsaw, it's a fairly straight cut. And um, once I got that done, I went ahead and cut like four, four and a half inch strips and uh, did that on the bandsaw. And once again, you know, make sure your your fences and everything are adjusted properly on your saw. Um, the, uh, the next thing I want to do after I get those strips cut is uh, to put that concave side down uh, on the joiner and get that flat so we can get some of the stuff put through the planer. So we got those put through, and there's a, there's a lot of steps we're going to go through here that I, I probably skipped because if you're a woodworker, you know that there are numerous times you're going to have to run something through the, the planer so, uh, or the joiner. So anyways, but uh, this is the initial breakdown of this lumber. Uh, once we got them jointed up uh, one side good and one edge, we, uh, we put it through our uh, DeWalt planer and... Uh, knocked it down to size and this probably in this case um, this lumber was probably almost one inch and you know maybe brought it down to seven eighths by the time we got done joining it and planing it and you know the next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to resaw some of this lumber and uh, if you're not familiar with uh, resawing, it's just uh, putting the lumber on its edge and running it through uh, a bandsaw. So you end up with really, uh, you know, a, a more slender board. You know, in my case, all the stock, most of it's going to be half inch, you know, just to give it a good look. So to, to get your bandsaw ready for that, what I uh, like to do is I like to figure out the drift on the blade. Now, if you've never resawed before, what you'll find out quickly is, is every blade is different, every saw is different. And the only way to find out how much drift you have, in other words, when you've got to cut through that bandsaw blade, it's going to want to 
turn the wood a little left or right. So what I try to do is I try to find the same wood I'm working with. In this case, I did have a, a pretty clear piece of uh, black walnut and, you know, get it a couple inches wide and, uh, and then uh, make a couple marks and draw a line right down the center of this board. Make sure there's no knots or anything like that. You, you want the bandsaw to be able to go through it and not, uh, not give you a false reading because the knots are really figured wood. So uh, once you get that line done, you're, uh, you're ready to go on the bandsaw. Now there's gonna be a few other adjustments to get your bandsaw ready. But basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna you know, get our tension good on the bandsaw and, and then freehand this board through, um, you know, go at least a foot, foot and a half. And what you're going to find is if you keep that blade right on the line, you're going to notice that that board's going to either turn a little bit to the left or turn to the right. And, and that's that drift I'm talking about. So once you uh, go about a foot, foot and a half, stop the saw, make sure you hold on to your board and don't move it at all because this is critical. Then take a pencil and uh, you're going to draw a line along this board. I probably should have mentioned too, make sure this, this board... Um, is pretty straight you know you want to run it uh, on edge through uh, through your joiner so uh, once you get your line on there on the metal table then what you're gonna do is uh, you know because this is going to show you your drift now all you have to do is loosen up the fence on your bandsaw and uh, in my case you know it's got four uh, four hex screws here but uh, and then move it over to the line and move that fence so it's dead nuts right on that line. And now you've got your drift figure out for this particular blade. So, and then you're gonna have to go and tighten up your screws. And that's the most critical part of uh, resawing. You know, the only other thing that's gonna mess you up resawing is if you're pushing too fast or if you have a cheap blade or a really dull blade, you know, it'll go all over the place. So. Um, anyways, uh, once you've verified that your, your tension's uh, where you want it to be and you've, uh, you know, you've got your, your bearings uh, uh, up against your blade, you want to have, um, you know, minimal play there but no binds, you know, and I like using a dollar bill on that. So, uh, and then you also have to make sure your fence is square. Now, in my case, I built this fence a long time ago and if it's... Uh, not square, maybe it's because it warped and I would have to go ahead and throw it on a planer or whatever. But uh, anyways, uh, just make sure all those things are good before you start. And the other thing you're gonna have to do is, is uh, I like taking a big C clamp and I got a big piece of, uh, it, I think this is like a three by three piece and I got a taper put on it. And I'm gonna push it up against the board that I'm cutting and that's going to prevent this board from walking out at the bottom. I'm going to be using my hands, and once I get close to the blade, a push stick to push it through. But this really helps you. Uh, you know, you could have an expensive mistake, you know, if that board starts walking out on the bottom. So uh, once you get that all set up and you can push that board through without too much pressure, you're, you're ready to start uh resawing here and I will mention that I've, I've used a, a bunch of different blades out there and the one I like the most is from Highland Woodworking. It's called the Wood Slicer. Now they have a half inch blade, a three quarter inch blade and I have found that the half inch blade just seems to do the best job, less friction, etc. So um, you know you can check them out and uh, it's a super super good blade and uh, you know, uh, they'll last you quite a while, but you'll know, like I say, if they start to wander on you and you've done all your adjustments, it's, it's time for a new blade. And you'll, you'll feel it too. You're, you're really pushing way too hard, you know, trying to get that wood to go through. So enough about Highland Woodworking's wood slicer. Okay, so we're ready to go here. You can see on this board, I've got a little line here. I just, I touch it to the blade just to see what I'm going to actually end up with. And when I get done resaw on this and um, obviously I'll have to uh, put it through the planer again. My hopes are is that I'll have a uh, half inch stock to work with and then I'll also have some uh, quarter inch, a little heavier veneer that I can put through the planer and I'll be using this 
uh, veneer in a bunch of spots, you know, my drawer bottoms, and it's also going to be used, uh, my, these particular drawers will have, the backs will be quarter inch just to give me a little bit more paper room in the drawers. And uh, also the back of the unit isn't completely sealed off, uh, so I'm going to use some of that quarter inch veneer there. So anyways, uh, let's get busy with it here and start sawing. And, uh, you know, the, the other thing that, that I want to mention again, too, is, is as you're resawing and you're going through here, make sure that you've got a push stick. You know, this is uh, a couple pieces of that quarter inch uh, that I, I finished and I threw them through a planer and they came out nice and straight because we, we made all of our adjustments. So once we get that, you know, we have to glue all these up together. And we talked about it earlier, you know, don't try to get really big pieces, you know, go with four or five inch tops uh, and uh, they won't potato chip you on, uh, on you over the years and get all, all warped. So um, I like using the tight bond glues and uh, you guys can use whatever you want, but I like the tight bond. And, you know, you can see this fancy brush I've got here to, to get that glue spread out. But uh, anyways, once you get that done, you know, stack them all up and, uh, and get as many as you can. Uh, you know, sometimes if, if you don't exert too much pressure with your bar clamps, uh, you're going to find that, you know, the, you don't need a ton of pressure if you did your job joining these. You know, if you're getting a lot of airspace when you push these together, you, you need to readjust your joiner. But uh, you don't need a ton of pressure, you know. So uh, get your glue on there and um, get them all in there. And you got to let them set up for, they say, 30 minutes. But, you know, I, I like waiting at least an hour before I start cleaning up the glue. Uh, 45 minutes uh, into it, you're going to find your glue is going to come off pretty easy, the, the bulk of it with uh with a chisel an old chisel and uh, you know that's a lot better than uh trying to clean it up while it's still really soft with water it's just gonna it's just gonna load the pores up of the wood and make a mess so you know use a chisel and then uh, um, as you'll see here i've got a beat up old chisel here that i'm gonna get the majority of it off and then if i uh if i want to get a couple you know you're gonna have a few ridges you can you can use a, a card scraper too to help get the rest of that glue and some of those ridges off, and then throw it through the uh, throw it through the planer again for that final finish on that. But uh, a lot of people don't use card scrapers, and I'll tell you, you know, they'll get you out of a jam. And there's a lot of good YouTube videos on uh, how to uh, go ahead and sharpen card scrapers, etc. And maybe I should do a video on that someday, but. Anyways, now you've got this wood all glued up and knocked down and, and planed, and it's looking good. Here was, a, I think, a thicker piece on top, and this is that veneer, and, you know, pretty looking wood. So, so we're ready to start building this thing. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is the, uh, the design calls for a large drawer in the middle that's going to be big enough to hold 8.5 uh, by 11 paper that's now folded, and then two smaller drawers on each side. So... Uh, what I have to do is, uh, I, I don't want to just glue these down to that board. They're going to walk all over and it'll make a mess. And I, I want to add some in, uh, structural integrity to it. So let's use uh, some dados to drop these boards in. Now, uh, a lot of times people will tear their table saw down and put in a, uh, a, a dado blade. And, you know, I've got this Freud blade. And I'll have a link for that in the information section two and it's just a rip blade it's it's not a real expensive blade maybe fifty dollars six you know maybe cheaper but uh it's a square tooth blade and it's perfect you know most most blades are not square tooth and you couldn't use them to cut a dado so all i do is uh i run a couple passes and i i sneak up on the width of my board i'm dropping in and i do all that on a uh, you know on a cross cut table that I made and uh, and just sneak up on it. So uh, once you get your lines drawn, and some people like to use a marking knife, and and that's good too. You can you can do that. I use a pencil, but uh, I'm going to sneak up on that cut anyways. But the key here is is to make sure you lay your boards out, and that that top board of this organizer should probably be laying over here, and draw out all your lines at the same time. 
and that way uh, your vertical dividers will be uh, will be a true 90 uh, you know but you've uh, you've got to make sure that your layout lines are good so um, and here's that here's that Freud blade I was talking about that that square tooth blade and uh, just what I did was is I, you know keep in mind I'm working with half inch stock so I, I don't want to take out too much so I took approximately one third of product away and that way I've still got some pretty good board integrity there and here's the finished product you know obviously these dados in the side are you know for the outside uh, dividers and then you've got uh, a full dado here on the middle and here's my cross cut sled and like I say uh, what I did to make it easier so I could look over the top I I, I drew my lines and then I also uh, continued those lines on uh, this side so I could look down and uh, I could I could sneak in and uh, you know make uh, possibly a three passes three and a half passes and uh, keep checking with the board that's going in so uh, it's a snug fit you don't want it super tight but you want it snug you don't want any slop there at all so anyways uh, you get those dados done and you know always dry fit everything you never know what mistake you could make and um, go ahead and uh, take a squared block too and drop it in here you'll know if your layout lines are wrong if, if these aren't square you're in trouble because you're gonna have to build unsquare drawers if it isn't so here's a just a dry fit here and uh, once we get the dry fit and we're happy with that now I what I noticed uh, when I got done was is uh, you know the uh, board was a little cupped I was I was a little shallow on one of the dados uh, and you'll see that later why well, trim one of them up with a block plane but you're always checking always dry fitting so uh, and what I like to do too is is because I want to have these uh, you know I'm gonna have to glue up those dividers to the bottom plate first so what I did was is I took some uh, squaring blocks and uh, clamped them to the board while it was in the dado and then uh, flipped it upside down and glued both and that way I know uh, when I clamp these blocks in uh, I'm gonna have these things drying at a 90 degrees so and you'll see that here in a second we get our glue in the dados and here we are here I've got I not only have one clamp going down on this board I've got another one against the uh, the outside divider and I know that's going to dry at a 90 you know I made sure these were square uh, b before I started these little blocks here and and you want to give them a little love tap too to make sure they're fully seated um, into the dado um, you'll see here in a minute where I must have had one sitting a little proud or maybe a little bit of debris in the dado that I didn't see but uh, so you get all that done and you know use these Irwin quick clamps they work fine for that um, I had this hanging off my bench a little bit with a weight I had here but you could do it any way you want you could use clamps on the back side or something and uh, I've got them all in place and drying up and once these things dry up after an hour the next thing I'm going to want to do is probably do a dry fit with the top again and I did and uh, this divider over here uh, something must have been in the dado down below but it it was definitely standing proud and this uh, top plate uh, was relatively straight after uh, joining and planing so I had to knock this divider down otherwise this far right side you know you can actually see a little daylight there I think in this picture so uh, I had to knock that down so all I did was uh, got out my uh, my uh, low angle block plane and knock that down a couple passes and then dry fit it again and and we're off to the races there we're ready to glue up the top um, after I got that on there and glued uh, actually I think this is another dry fit and I, I clamped it down temporarily just to see if uh, I had any airspace and it was looking good now so so now we're ready for a glue up and we got that glued in once I got them glued in, what I wanted to do is uh, use a pin nailer. I didn't want to use anything bigger. Really, the glue's going to hold it really well, but uh, I like using a pin nailer to hold it in place. And these were uh, three-quarter inch pin nails. 
And uh, this is a little air locker uh, pin nailer, which I, you know, for the money is really good. It's worked well for me. I'll have a link for that, too, if you want to check that out on Amazon. And I don't know why I took this picture. Uh, obviously, I'd be, uh, I did these lines on top, so I'd know where to nail. You can see a pin nail hole there, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it, right here, it looks like I'm nailing into dead air space, so. Pardon me for that picture, but uh, anyways, you get your pin nailing done on both sides. And uh, I wanted to throw this out there too. You know, there's no there's no woodworker I know that doesn't make mistakes. If you never make mistakes, I, I think there's a Reddit channel called Holier Than Thou, and you may want to check that out. But uh, I like taking the finest sawdust I can get, and that's from my my resawing on my bandsaw, and then I mix that with a little bit of tight bond in it. It works great. You know, it's a, you get a little bit of a gap or something in, a, in, that, uh, in that dado, and uh, you don't want to look at that the rest of your life. So just make your own, um, you know, putty with uh, sawdust from that bandsaw, and it works out really well. So, and this is the back. When I built this thing, I knew it was going to be up against a wall. And, um, you know, when you're building drawers, you're constantly putting them in and out. So, uh, I wanted a way to stick my hand in the back. And the other reason I don't like having boards go all the way down, I did it once. One time I built a, I think it was for the top of a white oak desk I built, and I had boards going all the way down the back. And uh, I didn't really allow for the wood to be able to move. You know, wood always moves depending on the season. And I ended up with a bunch of cracks. So all I was worried about was uh, putting a piece of quarter-inch veneer on the back here and then uh, putting a... Uh, Actually, I think this this might be half inch here. And then another piece down here just to keep these corners from moving. And then this was all open in the back. And nobody's ever going to see that. So I just wanted to give you a look at the back there. And then I wanted some trim on top just to, uh, you know, if I'm... You know, my wife wanted to be able to decorate the top, too, with whatever, and, and you didn't want it to slide off, and I wanted a better look. So I, I went over to my uh, my rigid sander, and uh, out of uh, more half-inch stock, I made these trim pieces and glued and pin-nailed those on top when I was done. Here's one at one end here, and it just gives a little dressier look, that's all. So anyways, here it is. You know, this, is, this glue's still drying, and... Same thing with the glue here. You know what? It's set up 30 minutes and then try to get what you can out with a, a chisel and uh, it'll be a lot easier and a lot messy, uh, less messy. So anyways, uh, so far we're looking good. Now all we have to do is uh, get some drawers built. So um, I've got some, um, this is all the stock I'm using for the sides of the drawers here. And it, I think it's to thickness at half inch, but it hasn't been cut yet. And and uh, I guess it was beer break time. You know, you have to have a cold beer when you're building something like this, especially when you're working with power tools. So, and don't laugh at my orange chisel. It's uh, she's sharp and she'll cut you deep. So uh, she's seen a few trips on the Tormac. Anyways, um, you know, now we're ready to start getting these drawers done. And and, and I didn't, you know, I, I've got half inch material. You know, I'm not going to get too fancy here. Um, I'm not going to go with dovetails or whatever. So I'm just going to use the, the dado setup that I had and use my cross cut and, uh, and, and use all dado connections, um, you know, for the front and the back. You'll see that the, the, the front's going to be a little different than the back. The front, you didn't obviously want to have anything showing except this cherry. And in the back, I didn't care. So it was a little bit different just to save myself some real estate for paperwork in the drawer. But uh, anyways, get this all done. And uh, the other thing you're going to have to worry about, too, is once you get your, your corners done with your dados, uh, you're also going to have to have uh, horizontal dados. I went up a half an inch, and I think you'll see a picture of one of those uh, horizontal dados, which you're going to be sliding your quarter-inch veneers into for your door bottoms. But uh, We'll continue here, and this is just showing you how I set up a stop block, and this probably took like two and a half passes with that blade, and it's it's easy work, you know. Didn't have to drop in a a big dado blade trying to hog out tons of wood, and uh, you know it's uh, it works for me, and I'm not having to change out blades as much. So, 
and I set up these nice little toggle clamps. So every time I'm making a run, I clamp it down. Uh, this one's always clamped down because this is just a stop block here. And uh, this makes my life a lot easier. So, And they're all done now, except I should have taken a picture with the horizontal lines going. Uh, well, actually, it would have been on these. These are the fronts uh, for the, uh, the dado for sliding in the uh, drawer bottoms. And when you go to do that, you know, sneak up on that cut, too. Now, you're not going to be able to use the cross-cut sled because these are longer in the Cross-cut sled might only hold eight inches worth of stock, and these are nine inches, I think. So you're going to have to set your table saw up and just sneak up on it and keep taking your quarter-inch veneer until you get a, a snug fit but not too tight. You don't want to be pounding in these drawer slides. You want this stuff to move a little bit with the seasons. And uh, here's a dry fit again. And we got the cherries uh, front done and uh, looking good. So we're getting there. By the way, this job took me three days in the shop, and they weren't full days, so it isn't a huge project. And here's that back I told you about where I used uh, some stock on the back here just to keep these corners from moving. And they're, uh, they're glued and nailed. So, uh, And here's a little tip here, too. Now, this is uh, one of my drawer sides. They're all the same length uh, going to the back, but when you go to glue in uh, your... Uh, your veneer. Uh, in my case, my veneer was going to be running from left to right in this slot. So, you know, four inch piece here, four inch piece here. And, and so, and dimensionally, that's the way the lumber is going to want to grow and shrink during the season. So all I like doing is put a little uh, bit of glue in the middle here, because really these corners are going to hold the drawer together with the glue and the pin nailing. But a little bit of glue in the middle and that's all you want. And that way that board can shrink and grow through the seasons and not, you know, split on you. If you have too much glue, uh, it's going to probably split your wood. So a little tip there on your on your glue up there. And then what I like to do is, is I'm gluing up the uh, each piece and uh, in the case of these, uh, these sides, I just made sure I had a squared block and uh, dropped it in here. Here it is over here. It's one of those plastic cheapy square blocks, but they come in really handy. And uh, and I made sure everything was looking good, and it was. You know, these aren't huge drawers. And uh, this was the last piece I was putting on here. You can see my cherry fronts facing down, and then um, I was going to throw in some quarter-inch veneer for the backs and pin those, they'll, uh, those in when we're done. And here we are. You can see the back's a little bit different. This is the ugly side of the drawer. These are three drawers all together. But you can see that this side's a little uglier. But what it did was it, it bought me another quarter inch as far as the depth of the drawer putting the paperwork in it. So, And I pin nail it. And I will say, if you never used a pin nailer, especially with hardwoods, do not ever put your hands on the side because it's amazing how these things will take a 90 degree turn and you'll perforate yourself. So, but uh, anyways, uh, so we get those all together and uh, we're looking pretty good here. You know, we've got, uh, we've got it all done. We're ready to finish. And uh, these next few pictures are going to be a little painful if you're a woodworker. Uh, I was pretty proud of this, uh, this little contrast I had going with the cherry. And once I threw on some finishing oil, this, this black walnut was really going to pop. And then I got the word from my wife that, well, we have a black and white kitchen, you know, black and white granite, black and white drawers. And you know what's coming. This, this next picture is going to hurt a little bit. But uh, sure enough, uh, you see it's white now. And that's what happened. She wanted it painted white. So... I used some matte spray paint, and I took out my Craig uh, drawer pull jig, which these things are awesome. Uh, if you've ever had to drill holes for pulls, you know you have to be dead nuts. In my case, this pull was a 3-inch distance, and uh, and these really help you with that 3 sixteenths bit to make sure that hole is straight through the wood. So I highly recommend getting one of these if you're ever having to do any type of pull work, and they're, they're pretty cheap too. So uh, there we go. We've got some holes in that drawer, and uh, here it is. It's done, you know. Um, 
the the poles we got from Target, and they're kind of cool. Uh, I like the poles. It's got a rustic iron look. Um, I'm not real fond of the white, but I wasn't going to win that argument, and that's okay. Uh, doesn't happen too often in my wood shop, but and I think we got another picture here showing it decorated, whatever, and she's all happy now. She's got her paperwork in there and less clutter. This was always filled with paperwork, and and that's it. You know, uh, that's uh, that's the finished product. And uh, the only piece, you know, I had some fun doing it. Yeah, I wish it was a, a natural finish, but maybe I'll win the next battle. And I, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you've learned a few things. And don't forget, look at the info section. You'll see all sorts of links on dimensions, etc. And that'll do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. That helps our channel. And, um, and that'll do it. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and that'll do it for this video.